Royal recruits. They're immune to spells. You can't zap their shield away. Their shield protects them from the rocket. When their shield is knocked off, even the log won't kill them. Three of them are worth three elixir, so don't even try lightning them. Mmm, it's an orange juice. The royal recruits are obnoxious to deal with. To put into perspective how obnoxious, you can stop a seven elixir P.E.K.K.A. for six elixir. Put the royal recruits all the way to the side as close to the P.E.K.K.A. as possible, and four will attract towards the P.E.K.K.A. Or, if you're confident that they will have no splash units behind the P.E.K.K.A., place them opposite from the P.E.K.K.A. so that only three will attract towards her. The other three will start pushing into the other lane and deal over 1600 damage to the tower if left ignored. Guards have long, sharp spears. Their weapons allow them to poke away at a safe 1.6 tile distance. It actually outranges the Valkyrie if she's not actively targeting the guards. The Royal Recruits share the exact same attack range. As long as the Valkyrie is focused on something else and you sneak up behind her, they will poke at her without taking any spin damage. They're very threatening. So I'll get into true red and true blue at the end of the video, but one Royal Recruit will deal 182 damage to the Princess Tower left ignored. Now, when you have two Royal Recruits coming at your tower, that's going to deal roughly 700 damage to your Princess Tower. Swarm cards can deal exponential damage, so when you add three Royal Recruits on the Princess Tower, that's anywhere from 1700 to 1800 damage to the tower. This is ridiculous considering each lane is only three elixir worth of cards. It shows how threatening their health is. Alright, it gets crazier now. With four Royal Recruits, it will take out the tower. Knowing how much they impact your tower, you do not want to ignore two or more Royal Recruits coming at you. Knowing that the Royal Recruits will deal over 1700 damage to your tower, it doesn't seem like a bad idea to use bats to reduce that down to 500 damage per tower. Let's talk basics. You gotta fight Beefy Swarm with Beefy Swarm. Barbarians are just enough to address the Royal Recruits as long as there's no support behind them. You're gonna have to pull them into the center. Valkyrie is one of the few cards that can stop the recruits one on one. Make sure to pull them to the center though because you don't want to have two full health roller recruits connected to any tower. Range splashers are going to be a bit tougher if you plant a wizard in the regular spot. He'll be able to pull the three recruits on his side but he will not pull the other recruits and he will not attack them. That one tower will drop 1700 health. What you got to do is put the wizard higher. He'll be able to pull both lanes of Royal Recruits and be able to stop them for the most part. Maybe a couple hits on your tower, but that's way better than 1700 damage. Alright, let's be real here though. You put a wizard that high and he is going to be sniped by anything that hides safely behind the recruits. A musketeer, archers, cannon, dirt goblin, you name it. Anything will snipe your musketeer and you're going to lose both lanes. So... Is there anything that can stop them? Well, yeah. The Rascals are pretty good at completely stopping them, but only on your side. And then as a bonus, you can time it perfectly. You've got that one surviving angel. <laughs> Real talk though. Them Rascals are no match for the log. Good game. Rule of recruits deployed. You lost the game. I personally wouldn't use the witch this high. It's too risky, but... At least you know she gets the job done if you're in a pinch and have no other solutions to take care of those unsupported rural recruits. The Executioner? Don't even get me started on that. His splash mechanic is designed to be vertical. And well, rural recruits are horizontal. The bomb tower kind of suffers from the same fate. It's actually more effective to plant it forward to lure all six guards into position. Alright, now this surprised me. Night Witch can actually take out the unsupported Royal Recruits. They'll get a jab on the tower, but those bats, they dealt a lot of damage and they do a really good job at stopping them for 4 elixir. But if you're actually worried about that one poke on both of your towers, bring skeletons with a Night Witch. That'll stop all of the damage. So long as they play Royal Recruits at the bridge unsupported. So you gotta use beefy units that aren't scared to hang near the river. Bowler's pretty decent and 
to top it off, he's got a large hitbox. Therefore, he has a larger aggro range, so you can plant him a little bit lower to stop all of the recruits. But let's get even beefier than that. A 7 elixir P.E.K.K.A on your side can round them up like cattle and slowly tickle them to death. To top it off, that P.E.K.K.A will survive if the Royal Recruits don't have any support. But you would be insane to use a P.E.K.K.A to counter swarm troops that have shields. A Mega Knight just makes way more sense since he actually splashes. But you're wasting a spawn damage since you actually need to plant him in the center to pull all six of them together. So what's a better solution? Ice Golem. Put him in the center, pulls all six of them, they all clump up. This way you can spawn on top of as many recruits as possible. Yeah, it's 9 elixir for 6, but at least you've got a relatively healthy Mega Knight now to counter push. Ice Golem is starting to look like a pretty juicy unit at this point. Use Ice Golem to clump them all up, deploy ranged units like even archers, and they will completely take out the Royal Recruits. That is not a bad deal. With the power of the Ice Golem, even an Ice Wizard can stop them. His Frost attack slows down the already slow units. It's painfully slow, and it works. Doesn't need to be anything fancy strong either. Don't have an E-Wiz or Musketeer in rotation? Princess will work just fine. She is spicy. If you're feeling really ambitious though, the Royal Recruits don't have any Musketeers or whatever behind them. An Ice Golem can keep all six of them inside that poison long enough to take them all out. If you love using your E-Barbs for rushing the bridge, save it. You're gonna need them to take out the Royal Recruits. 6 for 6 trade? Not bad. Overpowered card versus overpowered card. When you're running 3M, of course, they will take them out. Just make sure they don't have lightning or fireball or you're gonna lose both of your towers. Ice Golems are juicy, but Skeletons are just as juicy. Well, not so much the Skarmy. There are so many Royal Recruits that the Skarmy just vaporizes and they deal thousands of damage to your tower. But those one Skeletons are almost as good as an Ice Golem. Slap them in the center, put down a Witch, and you can stop the Royal Recruits with a Witch that is kind of still alive. Round him up like sheep with Skeletons, put down the Wizard, and he'll be able to two-shot those Royal Recruits after their shield is knocked off, of course. Even that vertical splashing executioner can take out these horizontal horrors. But he'll die in the process. Just pray there's nothing else with the recruits and you'll be fine. With skeletons, even the bomber does a better job than the executioner. And for two elixir less, he can even survive that whole ordeal if you time it just right. Even the zappies who attack so slow, paired with the skeletons, will do a better job than the executioner. Basically anything ranged with ice golem, or skeletons can help deal with the recruits very, very well. Of course, they stop three musketeers very easily, but it's going to be quite common to use three musketeers to split with zappies and roll recruits for those mega dual lane pushes. The roll recruits are basically a global unit. I mean this in the sense that they are everywhere when you deploy them, giving the mortar and expos no chance to lock onto your tower. But that being said, they synergize really well in mortar decks because they protect it so, so well. So there is a slight inconsistency with them, and it most likely will be fixed in the near future by Supercell. Here's an example for True Blue if you plant it on the first tile on the left. That right tower is going to go down to 896 health, whereas if you plant it on the exact tile as True Red, that health is knocked down to 805. All right, so Royal Recruits, they are obnoxiously strong. Maybe I'll go into a video tomorrow explaining why they're strong, what can be done about it, but hopefully Supercell doesn't take too long to act because them rascals, they took a long time. Now, they were, they were waiting for the data for the use rates, how many people were using them, and the more people start to use them, the more people started to learn how to counter the rascals. Their arrows and the log, they spiked in use rate specifically to counter the rascals. You were starting to see three spells and decks just because the rascals were so annoying and you had to take care of the girls. Now, Royal Recruits, based on this video, I feel like there is no reliable counter to take them out. So Rumham did tweet this out. He did say, hey everyone, we are aware the Royal Recruits are much stronger than anticipated probably stronger than Nightwitch. There has been a lot of good feedback on social media about why they are too strong and what should be done. We won't keep you holding your breath. They will be nerfed in August 
before CRL starts. So I think that's really cool that they're acting really fast on this. Type down in the comments what you guys think should be nerfed in the role recruits because I think it's not a stat issue. I think it's a deployment issue, but that's my personal opinion. If you guys want to watch more videos, it's going to be on the left side. If you want to subscribe, it's down below. Thanks for watching.